we're live. I think we're live. <laughs> okay. Internet's a little slow today, but that happens. Let me just get this situated so I can see comments if anybody pops in with questions. I move my, you guys can see my coffee. I'll move that out of the way. Hello. <laughs> Happy Friday. I am, <clears throat> uh, maybe I need to keep the coffee a little bit closer. Hold on a second. Uh, okay, we'll try that. I'm, I'm coming down with a little bit of something. I'm hoping that I can get through this without uh, getting too croaky on you guys, so bear with me. Um, but, oh, Tova's here. Hi, Tova. Thank you for joining me. Uh, yeah, today, so we are going to talk about my latest design. This is the one with all the colors. She is um, a, a cow. It's an infinity cow. It's, this is wrapped twice, and she uses 12 mini skeins of fingering weight yarn but it's a super adaptable pattern. And my pattern testers had a lot of fun with this. Um, I think that this, this design is gonna be great for not only the cowl, but scarves, uh, wraps, maybe even blankets. And if you wanted to, you could take this technique and use it for a garment as well. It's pretty versatile. So it's a really cool technique to learn if you don't already know how to do vertical join as you go strips of double crochet fabric. So that's the main thing that I'm teaching in this pattern. Oh, Trish is here too. Hi, Trish. So this is, so we've got the, the, the join as you go double crochet panels. So there are worked, here, let me take it off. Um, they are worked from the bottom up. And so each, each strip here is worked individually from the bottom up. And it's mostly double crochets. In the center, there is a teeny tiny crochet cable there. And it's made, I've got spaces in between the stitches, so it makes it really beginner friendly if you've never tried cables before. And then they're just uh, front post treble crochets that cross over the top of each other. So do not let the cable intimidate you if you are intrigued by this design. And even if it does, even if you don't like it, you can just skip it and try this with just the double crochet panels. The other thing that I will teach you how to do if you don't already know how to do it in this pattern, because there's a video tutorial along with it, and it's pretty extensive. It's long. It's over 30 minutes, so there's a lot of information in there. But I'll show you how I do my chainless double crochets if you want to. They're optional. You don't have to. And then I'll also show you how I use the invisible joint at the top of these guys to get a nice neat edge across the top of there. And then, of course, to make it into a cowl, the final thing that you do after you've been joining all these strips vertically to the, if you're right-handed crochet, you'll join them on the right-hand side of the fabric. If you're left-handed, you'll join on the left side. Um, but after you join all of these strips together and you get it as long as you want it to be, then, and it's one of the yellow ones, and I, I don't know which one it is. It's like magic. It really is. It's like magic. So you join your cowl together when you work this last panel. And so you join it on the right and the left as you go. And so it's really cool. Like I said, there's an extensive video tutorial that comes along with the pattern to help you walk, help walk you through it in addition to the written instructions. So I really hope you'll check it out and and give it a try because it's a really cool technique. Now, the, the yarn that I used for this one, it was originally designed as part of a kit for um, uh, Forbidden Fiber Company, and it was a Friends-themed kit. And she made these, like these are kind of classic TV show Friends themes, co themed colors, and she made this cool, uh, it's, it's like a gradient, I guess, because she's got the solid colors here. So she's got the purple and this kind of pinkish red. And then she blends them together in a variegated color in between. And then she takes that, that red and an orange and blends them together. So as soon as I saw this set, I was like, oh, this, this needs to be done in a cowl so that you can really see that, that effect that she created with all these colors because they just go perfectly into a circle. And so I was able to get three panels with each mini skein and they're standard 20 gram mini skeins of fingering weight yarn. But you might be able to get four out of it 
um, if you made them a little bit shorter, you could switch and make it so it, that it's longer. So this is, like I said, I had it wrapped twice and then wrapped once. It's, it's not untenably long, even on me, I'm short. Um, but to wrap it twice is fairly comfortable. But if you wanted it to be longer, if you wanted it to stretch down longer, then you could, you could try doing uh, shorter, shorter panels and get you could probably get four out of them that way now this is also great for stash busting i mean if you've got uh mini skein sets or you could pair minis or scraps with a solid color you could alternate i had oh i had my testers my pattern testers did so many fun things so we had someone took a rainbow cake and then separated the colors and then used those to plan out the, the segments so she got a really neat effect effect with that I had folks use DK weight yarn and worsted weight yarn, and those turned out really cool. It just, you would make fewer repeats. So to get a similar length, I would have to check and see how many she ended up doing, but you can absolutely work this in a heavier weight yarn and just stop when you get it as wide as you want your cowl or your scarf to be. And then of course I had some people do a scarf. They didn't join it to make a cowl. They preferred a scarf, so they did that. And so they just did the, 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 the stripes, and so they would be um, side to side stripes and then there was one that was a wrap so she did really long panels so she kept going until she got to the length of a wrap that she wanted and so she did I don't know maybe 10 or 12 panels because I think she was also using worsted weight yarn so it worked up fairly quickly I think and so that was beautiful Trish says I just love it thank you Trish thank you it's it's a fun one it's it's really neat to to experiment with with this technique and imagine all the different things that you can do with it um, let me see what else did did we do so we had um, cowls of course we had um, a couple scarves a wrap and I've already seen one person say they want to do a blanket with it so that's a fun idea and you know you can take this technique this um, this joining on the the right hand side as you work the strip of fabric and you can make a really cool modular effect with this so you could build so you could start out building your your panels just like this together into stripes and then you could turn the whole thing on its side and then join a strip up the side so you've got your stripes like this and then you could start doing stripes like this and so you could build out a wrap or a blanket that way and just just really play with that technique. So don't just look at this cowl and say, oh, well, I have to use fingering weight mini skeins and I have to make it a cowl. You really don't. There's a lot of options for you in this design. So I hope that it will inspire you to go try some new things. And if you are really loving this palette or if you're big friends, the TV show, if you're a big fan of the, the TV show, she does have a few sets of those available so it's called the witty banter set and i'll drop a, a link to it into the video description whoops sorry i'm jiggling everything um i'll add a link to that set but i don't know how long they'll be available for but uh forbidden fiber company witty banter mini skein set so those are available as of right now um trish asks so you can use any type of yarn yes absolutely you could use fingering weight DK weight, sport weight, worsted weight. I haven't seen it done in bulky weight yet, but I don't see why you couldn't. It's totally adaptable to any yarn weight you want. Just use the appropriate hook size with it and make it whatever size you want it to be. So if you're if you're working your little panels and you're like, you know what, I think that's about long enough, just skip ahead to the end of the instructions for the panel to finish it off and then go do your next one. So yeah, get, get creative with it. And the one thing that I will say, so if you are not a fan of weaving in ends, this is one of the problems with mini skein sets. We all love them. They're very exciting. We get these, these fabulous sets and we start making something and then we're like, oh, oh, the ends. <laughs> so when you are making this, if you are, oh, um, if you're just like, I really, really don't want to sew in all those ends, I want to use like a an ombre yarn, something like that, like a full skein of ombre yarn, yarn or self-striping or something like that. What you can do, and I'm, I'm working on a pattern for this, but what you can do is you can, when you finish your panel, 
slip stitch across to the other side of it and then either slip stitch down the side or you could do a, a row of surface crochet down the side so you've got like a little braid going down it so you can make it a design element and then you could come back down to the bottom and then you could chain out and add your next panel on that way and so you would do sort of a zigzag thing so you would do your panel and then you would slip stitch across slip stitch down and then chain out and do your next panel up and so you could do it like that. You'd have to experiment a little bit with it to get your tension right and make sure that you like the way it looked, but I think it could totally work. So that's, um, that's my last modification idea for this one. I know I've got a lot of them for this one. Um, but yeah, it's available now. It is in my Etsy shop as well as on Ravelry. Let me check. Do we have any other questions on it? I'm going to get a drink too. Oh, and I used, I didn't use every last bit of my, my mini skeins. I think I probably could have made each panel a teeny tiny bit longer, like maybe another two row repeat, but I didn't want to run out of yarn because that's, that's always a risk that you run with mini skeins. So if you're feeling adventurous, you could try making it just a teeny tiny bit wider with uh, another couple extra another another two row repeat on here and you might get it just a smidgy bit wider and still get all three panels um, but like I said I didn't I didn't want to run out and if you don't have so this uses 12 mini skeins and so if you have a smaller set say a set of six mini skeins one thing that you could do is pair it with a um, a full skein either a neutral color or a complementary solid color that goes along with your mini skein set and then that way you would have enough to do the full length cowl or let's see I wonder do I have I don't have a measuring tape handy I'm wondering how long it would be I bet with a set of six mini skeins that you could get enough fabric to to go around once I'm not sure how how wide that would be but um, I think it would so it would be one two three four five six one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh yeah, that would definitely go all the way around for a single a single wrap cowl. I think that would totally work if you had a set of like six, six or seven mini skeins. You could probably do follow the pattern exactly. You just wouldn't have as many as many um, colors repeating, right? So you'd only have the six panels that you repeat three times instead of twelve panels repeated three times. But I think that that would totally work to do a single single loop cowl. Uh, Tofa says, I love this design and I weave in ends for each panel before I start a new one. I think what I did is I would, I waited to weave in my ends until I finished the next panel. And then, so before I started the third panel, I would weave in my ends on the first panel. I think that was how I did it. But yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan of weaving in ends as you go, if you can make yourself do it. <laughs> um, because if you if you stay on top of them then they're not too bad but I really do not like getting to the end of a project and I have a bunch of bunch of ends but I love mini skein sets they're so fun I love getting to play with all the colors so that is that is what I would recommend for this and it is oh blocking it I blocked this very gently so it has this sort of scalloped edge here and that that's just because so the stitches in the center here with the um, the treble crochets and the spaces so that makes the fabric kind of naturally open up a little bit towards the center and so that's what causes this very slight scalloping you can if you want to block it so that your edge is straight you could totally do that but I just very gently block this because I didn't need to add any extra length and I thought that the scalloped edge looked pretty cute and it wasn't worth the effort of trying to make it straight so that's my story I'm sticking to it and um, yeah, this is a fun one. Go check it out. Let me know if you've got any questions. Um, and I'll add, I'll add links to where it's available in the video description as well. So I don't see any other questions right now. If you think of something later, let me know. Otherwise, I'll see you next time. Thanks for joining me. Bye.